So I want to talk about one of the uh, most difficult challenges that almost every organization faces, and that is, how do you hire the right people? How do you make sure that when you are interviewing people and going through the uh, hiring process that you are getting the right people on board with the right skills, talents, abilities, knowledge, and everything that you need in that employee? So many companies hire someone and then relatively quickly figure out that that person isn't the right person for the job. And you go, well, how did that happen? Why weren't you able to discern that in the interview that this was the wrong person for this position? And so I want to use the ladder of commitment to show you how to interview people to make sure that you are getting the right people in the right position at the right time. The whole purpose of an interview is to discern truth. The problem with that is that the interview process itself is almost invariably a facade. And that is that when people go to an interview, they're on their best behavior. When they go to the interview, they've thought through their answers. They're prepared for the interview. They uh, are probably dressed in their best apparel and they have got a haircut and they've polished their shoes and they've put on makeup. And so what you're seeing may not necessarily be the employee that you're going to hire. And if you've ever hired somebody and they looked great in the interview and then they show up and you go, what happened to you? You know, they shaved before they went to the interview and then they come to work and they've got a beard. And all of a sudden they've changed because that person in the interview is not the same person that actually comes to work. And so the interview process is breaking through that facade and trying to discern truth, trying to discern what's really inside that individual and who they are and uh, what they are and how they operate and what their skill sets are. And so if you look at the ladder of commitment, on the very first day somebody comes to work, where would you like to be on the ladder of commitment with regard to that employee? At what level? Now, a lot of people say, I'd love them to come in committed, and we've talked about uh, how that typically doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, that would be wonderful if people would come into the job and they would actually be committed. But there is a level on this ladder where, in my opinion, you have to be with a new employee, because if you're not at that level, then you should not hire that employee. So at what level would you like to be? Now, I will tell you that a lot of people have said, I'd like at least that for them to be in the open and to break through that facade and to uh, tell me truth rather than lies and that I could actually, you know, believe what they are telling me, which is actually up here. And I will just tell you that uh, I would never, ever hire an employee if I, uh, if I wasn't already at the level of trust, respect, and confidence at the end of the, of the hiring process. You have to be at the level of trust, respect, and confidence, or don't hire them. Now, what that means is that you better be very, very good in the interviewing process because you need to do those things that will get you to the level of trust, respect, and confidence, and also in your uh, probationary process to get to the level of trust, respect, and, and confidence. Now, you will recall that there are only two ways in which to develop trust, respect, and confidence, and that is to get results and the other is when you hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions. So the purpose of an interview is to see whether people can get results and to listen to how they think, reason, and come to conclusions to see if there is a fit in the way in which the organization thinks, reasons, and comes to conclusions. And that ought to tell you something in the interview process is who should be doing most of the talking during the interview? The interviewee, and yet in so many organizations, the interviewer spends a whole lot of time talking about the company and talking about the job and talking about uh, this and that and, and uh, just spending a lot of time talking and very little time listening when it should be the reverse of that in an interview. The interviewer should be listening to the interviewee and the interviewee ought to be do doing most of the talking so that you can hear how they think and how they reason and how they come to conclusions. And so I want to show you the process of interviewing people using the ladder of commitment so that you can actually focus on the things that matter most in the interview. That ought to tell you something too. So what do you focus on in the interview? You focus on the things that matter most. So let's talk about that interview process. How do you know whether somebody uh, can get results or not? They haven't ever worked at your company before, so how do you know whether they can get results? Well, you look at their resume. 
And so most interviewers spend a lot of time on this. They read over the person's uh, resume and they say, hmm, I wonder if this person will be a good employee here. So in the interview, they go over the resume and they talk about the things that are in the resume. Now, did, does this resume develop trust, respect, and confidence? The answer is no. You know why? Is it possible that people lie on their resume? Is it possible that people exaggerate their position, exaggerate their title or their education or their experience? Is it possible that they exaggerate that on their resume? Well, if it's true that people lie on their resume, then you cannot trust this. So why are you spending so much time talking about the person's resume? And so what does the resume get you? It doesn't get you trust, respect, and confidence. What does it get the person? It gets them the interview. And then what does the interview get them? Well, hopefully the interview gets them the job, but the way in which it gets them the job is to develop trust, respect, and confidence. So in the interview, I will just tell you that this is how I, what I do with the resume. I tell the person that, you know, I read your resume. I know what's in it. And so thank you very much for sending it. And now let's not talk about your resume anymore because I'm not interested in what you did in the past. I'm interested in what you can do in the future for us. So don't talk to me about your past companies. Don't talk to me about your past experience. I want to talk about the future and what you can do for us. Now that changes the focus of an interview significantly from looking at a resume and looking at the past to looking at this job and looking at the future. And then what you do is you want to hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions about the future. Now this process works great for supervisors, managers, uh, directors, vice presidents, executives, uh, for people who are in pretty significant positions, in key positions in IT or in whatever it may be. It wouldn't necessarily work for a frontline lowest level employee because what you really want to do is you want to hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions. Now, it might work for frontline employees, and you just have to think through the positions that you are interviewing people for in, the, in your company so that uh, you know how to use this process. But here's what you focus on instead. Instead of focusing on the resume, you ask seven questions. Seven key questions that will help you to focus on the things that matter most.